representation of what our park should look like in May of 1972. And the concept is very much like a four-leaf clover. Uh, one leaf is Hanna-Barbera land, a uh, fantasy area for the entire family. Another leaf is frontier land. Another leaf is a reproduction of an old amusement park of uh, 50 years ago that we're calling Coney Island. And the fourth leaf over here where you see the pool and the Eiffel Tower, we're calling International Street. The, these four areas, actually five areas of Kings Island, it's kind of a clover leaf concept. And in my mind, I was so impressed with what I'd seen in Europe and the New York World's Fair and the Canadian National Exposition that I wanted this kind of soft international flavor as you walked in the park. The fountains, the flowers, the trees, the Eiffel Tower. But we had to have, obviously, several other areas. Hanna-Barbera was a no-brainer. That's why we merged in the first place. So Coney Island's Land of Oz, which sort of our children land, became Hanna-Barbera with all its reputation and promotional value. It was a natural fit. Fantastic. Then I decided we're the Ohio River. We had to have a historical area. We had to have Rivertown. We're a German town, so we had to have the uh, German area and the beer garden and that kind of thing. And then the last qu quadrant of the park had to be Coney Island. And it was almost a themed area of an old amusement park. So we put the Coney Island stuff there. Interestingly enough, a lot of the Six Flags parks had taken the Disney philosophy. Uh, they were moving away from the traditional stuff. They didn't want roller coasters, cotton candy, games. They didn't want any of that because that had sort of a stigma of the old world. We knew in many respects they were on the right track, but how can you not take up to Kings Island, which was so bloody successful at Coney Island? Roller coasters, cotton candy, games, but we could theme it in, as in a historical park, so that's what we did. My first trip to Kings Island, the site of Kings Island, uh, Gary Walks, who was my boss, who had hired me, uh, said uh, one day at Coney Island, let's go out and look at this, this site that we're, we're looking at developing. And uh, I don't think I'd been any further north than Kenwood at that time in Cincinnati. And uh, we drove from Coney Island. There wasn't uh, 71 was just being completed then. And uh, we went out the, the back way. We got up to Kings Island. And it was literally a cornfield. Uh, it was a farm on both sides of the road. And uh, we had our blue jeans and our boots and our sticks. And we started walking the site and saw what a magnificent site it would be to build a theme park. And I remember we, as we walked the area, we were talking about the elements that we could put into the park. And if you remember the uh, train ride at Kings Island, we walked back to that huge ravine area, and we said, wouldn't this be a great area to put a bridge across, have our train come around this area, have the Indeds attack with the cowboys? And uh, that's how Kings Island really was born. It was a marvelous piece of property. Uh, the uh, Taft uh, folks picked out this piece of property. It was a... Uh, the King family had it on sale. It was, I think it was about 1,600 acres, uh, 800 on one side of the uh, 71 and 800 acres on the other side. And uh, early on, I had actually looked for property myself, and I found a piece of property on Claremont County off of 275. But this was a better location, particularly for feeder cities like Columbus and Indianapolis. And... Uh, it was, it was a great location. There wasn't anything out there. In 1969, I-71 wasn't even completed. Uh, we had to, uh, we had to uh, redesign two interchanges with Warren County. They did all that for us. You know, it was amazing. We got two interchanges, uh, Kings Island Drive, the land and the park for about $35 million. It was a cornfield. Uh the uh, Kings Island Drive, <laughs> non-existent. Uh, of course, the, that was, there was a road coming up uh, uh, right at the front gate of the park almost, uh, uh, which was the main thoroughfare through that area. So we, we began planning and talking about how we could route people through the area, what would be, the, again, the best use of the land. Uh, and we planned that parking lot out front, that, which, is, uh, which was originally about 110 acres of parking. Uh, Coney Island 
in its entirety was only 155 acres. So we had basically a, a third of our of the Coney Island Park, if you will, comparable in parking at the Kings Island. So it was a, it was a cornfield. It was very rural. Uh, there was basically nothing north of Fields Ertle Road at that time, uh, and. Uh, and it was it was wonderful property to to build a, a park, particularly the way all of the uh, uh, with the convergence that would come later of the highways.